Hello to all, it is I, Greg Bosson, welcoming you to the middle of my summer in 2014. This is Quick Tips, uh, and this is for July of 2014, so this little Quick Tip is on our e-newsletter that goes out once a month, so if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, that's where it originally came from, a little e-newsletter that comes out every month. You can sign up for it at quickbooksmadeeasy.com. But uh, this is our little QuickBooks tip uh, to make your life easy. This particular tip for July 2014 is about voiding checks. So what we're going to talk about specifically is how to void a check um, and specifically a problem that develops if you're voiding a check in a prior period on how to avoid that problem. And I've seen a lot of people with this issue, so um, I want to make sure that everybody understands this because this is important. All right, so uh, are you ready? Oh, one more thing. Uh, this tip is relevant no matter what version of QuickBooks you are using, uh, so don't worry about that. Uh, so enough with that. I'm using QuickBooks Pro just for the heck of it here, just to kind of shake things up. That's kind of the basic version of QuickBooks. Uh, but anyway, so Voiding checks. So frequently you have old transactions, old checks specifically, that never are going to clear. You usually run across them when you're in the middle of doing your bank rec. So I'm going to go to banking and I'm going to go to reconcile. Now, um, for purposes of the discussion today, it's 2020. Okay? So just just understand that we are way in the future here. I'm speaking to you from the future. Uh, so understand this data file and this computer is in 2020 land. But anyway, so we are going to actually, we're in January now of 2021, so we're going to reconcile January of 2021 um, uh, the, uh, the bank account. But anyway, the point is when you go to reconcile, and I'm in the middle of doing a reconciliation, Oftentimes, you'll find old checks up here that are never going to clear. Here's one dated January of 2019 when we're trying to reconcile two years later in uh, 2021. So this is an old check never going to clear. What do you do? Well, you usually just ignore it because you don't know what to do. Now I'm going to tell you what to do. So what you want to do is you want to avoid these old things. So I can just double click right from the reconciliation window and it pops me up here to where I can void the check. Now, depending upon what version you have, if you have an old version of QuickBooks, you may need to go up to Edit, and when you're in the Edit, you will see an option that says Void Check right here. Now, you'll also see something that says Delete Check, and I do want to talk to you about the difference real quick. If you delete a check, the check is removed altogether out of QuickBooks, and you'll have no record of what happened to check number 220. These checks are important pieces of paper. So if the check ever existed, if it was lost, if it was stolen, if it was mangled in the printer, ooh, mangled, I like that word, um, then um, you want to void it so QuickBooks still has a record that the check existed. Only time you want to delete a check is if the check was really only, if it was one check, but somehow it was entered into QuickBooks twice. Then you don't have two checks, you only have one, so you can delete one of them. But nine times out of ten, you'll be voiding. Now watch, uh, oh, I'm going to say one more thing. In the newer versions of QuickBooks, you don't have to go into the edit menu. They have this X right here, and you may have this in your version, and if you click it, actually you click underneath here where you go drop down there, it says delete, but here's where you can delete or void. And again, you want to mostly void. So you can either do this, or you can go up to the edit menu up there um, and click void right here. But anyway, so I'm going to go over here, I'm going to click void. Now I want you to watch very carefully what happens when I void this check. Okay, Here's the check. It's written to Dave's Cafe. The check number is 220. The account is office supplies. And the date is 1-2 of 2019. When I void the check, watch very carefully. I'm going to click void. It basically keeps everything about the check the same. It's still to Dave's Cafe. It's still check number 220, so we have a record of it. It's still office supplies. But what it did change was it changed the dollar amount to zero. So basically, it just changes the check amount to zero. Now, it's not really voided yet. You have to click Save in order for it to be voided. But when you do that, it's simply going to change the dollar from what it was to zero. Now, the most important thing of all that you've got to understand is that not only did it not change any of the other fields, but it also didn't change the date. It was originally written in 2019, and it has been voided 
but the date didn't change and so it's also voided as of 2019 all right voided as of two years ago today we're in 2021 so I'm just gonna pop up a little profit and loss report that's compared to a prior year so and I'll scroll down to where office supplies is because that's where uh, this check was pointed to originally Now we haven't voided the check yet because we have to click the save button to void it so right now if we go into office supplies we have 15,145 in 2019 I'll double click on it and you'll see there's that check fifteen thousand uh, dollars right there okay now watch what happens if I void this check again it's changing it as of the original date in 2019 so it's basically voiding it as of its original date so watch what happens when I click save and close to really record the void look at the 15,000 keep your eyes over here do you see how it basically removed the check as of 2019 so this might be bad because if you're voiding a check in a prior year like this the tax return may have already been done now you're changing the books in the prior year so that's the issue if you void a check in a prior year that, that was written in a prior year it may screw your books up because it may change the prior year's numbers so if they're voiding a check in a current period like you wrote it in November and you're voiding it in November that's probably fine but if you're doing it in a prior period a period that you don't want to change prior years you never want to change because the tax returns already done but even a prior month you might not want to do it in if the board's already seen those reports and you don't want to change a prior month so that's the problem oh don't you just love Norton so that's the problem could you please get away from me all right so that's the problem it voided it in the prior period so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna double click here I'm gonna pick up this check and I'm gonna unvoid it um, by simply putting the dollar amount back because that's all it changed it also put this word void in the memo field but basically just resaving this great so now it's back so now it's as if we never voided it so I'm gonna void it again but this time I'm gonna show you another way of doing it okay I'll just go back into the rec here there it is um, so that's how it looked unchecked so now I'm gonna double click and I'm gonna click void and now I'm gonna point out a window when I click say that I didn't point out before and it's this window right here now if you have the desktop version of QuickBooks and you have version 2014 uh, then you will get this window if you have the uh, online edition or the Mac you don't get this option but in the desktop version you will get this option now there's a lot of words here uh, it says to maintain accuracy of your reports and balance the accounts affected by the check QuickBooks can create a journal entry in the earlier period and a reversing entry in the current period. Would you like QuickBooks to void the check and enter the appropriate journal entries for you? Now this wording is really, I don't like the way this is worded, but what it's basically telling you is if you don't want it to void the check in the prior period, if you click yes, it's going to void the check in the current period. All right. I clicked no a minute ago just void the check and it voided it in the prior period this time I'm gonna click yes and it's gonna void it in the current period okay so it's it's gonna leave the prior period untouched and it's gonna fix the bank account in the current period okay so you ready keep your eyes here on the 33 and the 15 do you see how the 15 stayed the same but the 33 went down to 18 so it voided it in the current period now let's see exactly what it did for those of you that are accountant types I'm gonna double click on the number here what it did was it voided the actual check so we have a record of the check 220 and that it was voided 
Okay, but it didn't want to change last year, and it had fifteen thousand of expense in last year. So it replaced that voided check with a journal entry. In other words, it voided the check and then added a journal entry that will basically do the exact thing that the check did, which is decrease the bank account and increase office supplies. And then even put in the memo that that's why it put it in here so that it could void check 220. So basically what it did was it left this 15,000 intact, it removed it from the check when it voided it, but it replaced it with a journal entry so your books still match. But it still got to void the check. So then what it did was it went into the current period and it added a reversal of the journal entry in the prior period that basically will void the check by increasing the bank account. When you debit a bank account, you increase it. And by lowering office supplies in the current period. Okay, So it, so it basically reversed it in the current period. So now it ran the undoing of the check uh, in the current period. So it's in 18,000. So it doesn't affect the prior year, but your current year now has the reflection of that voided check. Now, one thing some people don't like is that when it voided it, it basically just, and then did the reversal. When it did the reversal, it basically lowers office supplies in the current year. So this is a fairly big check here, so it makes office supplies look like, wow, we didn't spend very much on office supplies in the current year, but in reality, we did. It's just that we were voiding a check for office supplies in a prior year. So what some people do is they'll go into this entry that QuickBooks made, and instead of pointing the other side to office supplies, they'll create a voided checks income account, and I'll pick that click save and close, change it to that. So then now office supplies is still what it really was for the current year. But if you go down to the bottom, I created this voided checks as an other income type account. Now it'll be shown separately so it won't skew your numbers up in the actual expense accounts. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Now if you have the online edition or Macintosh, and you want to void a check in a prior period and you don't want to mess up the prior period, what do you do? Well, you do the exact thing that QuickBooks does. You void the check as of the prior period by going up to the check and clicking void. And then you're going to need to create a journal entry to replace it. And so the check was for $15,000. So you're going to make a journal entry just like QuickBooks did as of the same date of the check. And you want to make a bank account go down because that's what the check did. So you're going to credit the checking account in order to make bank accounts go down in QuickBooks or in accounting. You credit them. And then you make office supplies go up in this case by debiting it. And then you put in the memo just like QuickBooks did what the check number was. Then the first day of the next period, we'll save and close, you enter a reversing journal entry, an entry that's the exact reversal of that first entry. And you can actually pull up the, ch the entry that you clicked and clicked reverse, and it'll make a reversing journal entry for you if you have that option. If you don't, you'll have to make the journal entry manually. All right. So I think that's everything that I wanted to say about um, voiding checks. So what I would say, just the last thing, is wait till the end of your fiscal year to void checks, but void checks before the prior, before you give the year end work to your accountant. Don't try and void checks after the year has ended for the prior year. That way you'll avoid the problem altogether. Um, but if you want to, now you know how to do it. All right. If you want to avoid checks in a prior period, I think that's it. So I will see you next month uh, or well, actually, I won't see you. I will hear you. No, I won't hear you. You will hear me. <laughs> Uh, but you can see me. I have pictures on YouTube. But anyway, so sign up for QuickBooksMadeEasy.com to get more of these tips.